Hey guys, so some of you will of course remember that some time ago I did a video where I compared the uh, internet browser Firefox to the internet browser Google Chrome. And today I'd like to do a bit of a follow-up video where I talk about some of the things that I've discovered, the pros and cons of both, um, since that last video. Okay, so um, I've been using both browsers simultaneously, so I've kind of got a bit of a good feel. Now, I've been using both of these browsers primarily in Windows for day-to-day -day work, but there are some caveats to running them on Linux-based distributions as well, and it kind of changes it up a little bit as well because of how Linux handles its software and how Windows handles its software. So, um, at the moment, uh, as you can see here, I have just searched into Tumblr Chrome versus Firefox just to give you something to uh, have a look at as I'm uh, as I'm talking now. Some some jokes or uh, or some some thoughts from other people as well. Um, some nice, interesting artwork, of course. I always kind of like the the artwork that comes out of these kind of debates. Whereas you can see the Newton's Cradle there on the left. You can see the Chrome versus Firefox thing. I really like this one here, where you've got Chrome, the sort of the mechanical robot. For, um, and you've got the, the fox with the fiery tail. Very, like, you know, I love the aesthetic on that. Um, but anyway, aesthetics aside, um, so, so, so there are some, th some things that I kind of want to bring to light when it comes to the whole Chrome versus Firefox debate, because some of them have larger pros and larger cons than I initially expected. So first, right off the bat, the thing that I kind of want to talk about front and center is the stability on the Windows platform. Uh, and and pos possibly one of the biggest influential factors when it comes to stabilities in browsers. Now, I, I'm gonna criticize Firefox here because it did crash on me quite a lot of times. Uh, however, the, um, the addendum to this is that uh, any other browsers kind of would crash in the same kind of instance. It's that Google Chrome uh, and the open source variant Chromium have a, um, have have it have a unique way of doing things which kind of makes them almost impervious to crashing at least in my experience and this is through various amounts of testing as well um, so the idea with Firefox when you open up a Firefox window and you open up all the tabs you could be surfing six tabs you could be surfing 60 tabs um, that is all within one instance uh, of Firefox in Google Chrome, each tab that you open up is an entirely separate sandboxed instance. So what that means is that if you visit a website or a web page that makes your browser go iffy, uh, in Chrome, it'll crash that one tab. In Firefox, it could crash that whole browser. That, to me, is a very big fundamental difference. So um, when it comes to stability from that angle, it's not an integral problem with the software. It's the obviously it's the integral problem with the site that you're visiting. But because Chrome and Chromium sandbox their each individual tabs, it means that your overall browser is at a, a lower risk. And because I, of course, say might be uploading a YouTube video on another, another tab, or I might be downloading something or whatever, a crash is a complete. Um, hiccup in, in those overall plans. It kind of relies on the fact that I can get my YouTube upload uh, starting from the point where it crashed. And to be honest with Firefox, so far so good, but I certainly don't want to rely on that. So when it comes to stability, the fact that Google sandbox each of their tabs is a big, big, big um, bonus. Now, in theory, you can do this with Firefox. Uh, however, the problem is that I've noticed a lot of my add-ons and extensions don't work uh, when you actually sandbox each of the Firefox tabs. I've also noticed that it doesn't really actually stop crashing that much as well. Um, now there is a big bonus on um, Google Chrome in the sense that it comes with what's called Pepper Flash. Now if you're in Linux, this is particularly useful because it's a form of Adobe Flash uh, that is actually integrated very closely into the Google Chrome browser, which means that you don't have to download it, you don't have to put up with Adobe's silly um, you know, updates and constant nagging to get the latest version of Adobe Flash. Google Chrome just takes care of that for you. Whether or not you're on Linux, whether or not you're on Windows, whether or not you're on Mac, it always has the latest version of uh, Adobe Flash that's nicely supported on any system whatsoever. That's a big plus to Google. Now that's not available on the Google Chrome open source variant, Chromium, um, because Adobe do not open source that software, they do not license that software to be given away for free. So um, just as a quick side note, the difference between Google Chrome and Chromium is that they're two sides of essentially the same coin. Google outsource, uh, open sourced rather, 
uh, the b majority of their browser code. And then what people can do is they can compile that code and they can create and analyze that code and check that code for bugs, errors, uh, malicious bits of software that might have snuck in. And um, it can be peer reviewed and then compiled and ran on your computer. If you are running a Linux distribution, you are no doubt familiar with Chromium because Chromium is often bundled in the repositories of a lot of operating systems. Um, rather than Google Chrome, because Google Chromium is, of course, open source. Google Chrome is not, because it comes with all these little add-ons, like the up-to-date Adobe Flash, like a PDF viewer, like a Google updating tool, uh, again, which is proprietary, I believe, not open sourced, which means that if you were to download and compile a version of Chromium, if you wanted to support the open source community, you would actually have to update that software yourself. Now, there are there's one big pro and one big con to this. The big pro is that once you've got a setup that works, you don't necessarily need to change it until you want to change it. Uh, the big con is that you could very well be running an out-of-date browser unknowingly. Uh, of course, with Linux and how Linux puts together its software through repositories um, and through you know how everything's all synced up, Google Chrome, uh, Chromium, rather, it's not Google Chromium, it's just Chromium, um, syncs up with the rest of the operating system, which means that it effectively does automatically update. So. Chromium is definitely a much more viable option when it comes to uh, Linux operating systems, uh, especially if you have a, uh, if, if a desire to support open source projects anyway. Uh, I also understand, but this is only through the grapevine, that there is a lot less surveillance software included in the Chromium, or there is you know, practically no surveillance software included in the Chromium uh, source code where it, there could very well be in Chrome. So, um, that's also something to bear in mind. But Chromium, of course, they still sandbox their tabs. You still get a lot of benefits. You can also sync up your bookmarks with your Google account, which is, to me, um, it's, a, it's a fundamentally important thing. That's why I'm really only looking at the main browsers. And in fact, the extensions are, are a big important part to uh, my browsing experience as well, which, again, I'm only really ever going to be talking about browsers that have expansive support for extensions. So, um, when it comes to crashing, yeah, on Windows, Firefox crashes a lot more and it takes out the entire browser. Google Chrome, it only crashes when I do actually visit a really dodgy website, or not even a dodgy website, just like a badly coded website, but it only crashes that one tab. I do find that Firefox crashes mostly when uh, I'm on video sites, mostly YouTube, for example, and um, and I've just got too many like YouTube uh, instances or YouTube um, tabs open and I think it, it, it overloads some kind of memory or whatever uh, or, or it, uh, it messes up the uh, how the codec works or something to that effect um, but okay so yeah when it comes to um, stability I have found Chrome to be infinitely more stable than Firefox I know some people will claim to have the opposite experience I also understand that Firefox is a lot more stable on Linux operating systems because Firefox is kind of like built into the Linux operating systems in the same way that Chromium is as well. And because of repositories and how Linux operating systems are put together, you're going to have a greater stability no matter what browser you use. Uh, Firefox, of course, does allow you to sync up your bookmarks and add-ons across all your devices as well. Uh, so when it comes to that kind of functionality, the idea of having the same bookmarks across your Android, your you know, desktop one, desktop two, etc., uh, and all your various Linux operating systems that you could very well be running on various partitions on your hard disk drive. Yeah, um, the the uh, the ability to sync up bookmarks is, uh, is is fundamentally important, and I like the idea that it's integrated into the browser as well. There are add-ons that you can get that transcend browsers, but to be honest, these seem to be a lot more trouble than they're worth. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd rather just pick a browser and go with it. Um, okay, so the next um, thing that I want to talk about now, mobile browsing experience, because I have looked at that as well. Big difference. There is a clear winner, actually, on the mobile browsing. It's Firefox. Firefox, um, and, and, and it's pretty much for, for one reason and one reason alone is that you actually have options. You can actually choose how you want to use the Firefox Android browser. It accepts add-ons. It accepts lots of add-ons. You can run Ghostry on it, so you don't have to worry about picking up all kinds of cookies and nasty bits of malicious malware on the internet. Um, it allows you to um, install Adblock. It allows you to install... Um, what else have I got on there? LastPass. Uh, it allows you to install, if there is like a prominent uh, extension that you can, um, that you can, you, you know, that you can run on your main browsers, it'll run on the Firefox Android browser as well. 
I have yet to actually find a useful extension or add-on that works on the Chrome browser for Android. I can't even change, uh, like it gives you like four options for default search engines, none of which are start page or duck, duck, go. You can't change your default search engine, at least not without editing config files or whatever, um, outside of the four main browsers, Ask, Yahoo, Bing, and Google. So it gives you a remarkable lack of customization does the Google Chrome Android browser. So yeah, definitely a clear winner. They're both stable. Um, I've had no crashes from either of the browsers. I find the interface of Firefox better. Firefox is the better browser on uh, Android, which is actually kind of peculiar because I know that um, Firefox has a reasonably small uh, share of the Android browsing uh, market, but it's the best browser out there by a long, 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 long way. Uh, and I'm not, uh, I mean, okay, there might be something that might be more suited to someone else that might support Flash or something, for example, but um, fundamentally speaking, um, yeah, the Firefox browser on, on, on Android just runs away with it. No contest, no contest at all. You can also sync up your bookmarks across with your desktop and um, and all that stuff as well. So I've talked about stability. I've talked about the uh, mobile port. Um, I haven't really talked much about the... Um, and, and when it comes to actually going back to what I said about Pepper Flash and the, uh, the fact that it's bundled with Google Chrome, which is a definite big point in its favor... It's actually also worth bearing in mind that 9 out of 10 video sites and 9 out of 10 sort of sites that you would think would rely on Flash actually have HTML5 equivalents now. There were only two sites I could think of off the top of my head which required um, Flash to actually play the video content. The first is the Escapist magazine, and you can actually upgrade to the HTML5 browser if you're a subscriber to the magazine. I, of course, am not, but they also release the majority of their videos on YouTube like a week later anyway, so if you're willing to wait a week, that's fine as well. Um, and Twitch. Twitch TV, yeah. Um, interestingly enough, they are working on an HTML5 version of their um, streaming service, and of course with the bankroll from Amazon, that's going to probably come around sooner rather than later. In fact, they already have uh, like a working version of it. In fact, I uh, some time ago actually did a video where I told you how you can access that through the VLC media player. But um, but other than that, um, yeah, most most websites uh, do not require Flash anymore. It's dead in the water. Flash is dying. It's it's old technology. It's no people don't trust it because it's too easy to to track and monitor. Um, it's too easy to manipulate things like webcams and stuff like that. If you are on a site where you have given um, the Flash applet permission to use your webcam, it, well, in fact, you can actually um, you don't actually necessarily have to wit wittingly give permission for a Flash applet to use your webcam. It can actually just sneak on. Um, using various trickery, which is, yeah, like I say, Flash is a huge, huge, huge security flaw, and um, and it's whenever you're you're browsing the internet on a, you know, like a secure computer, Flash will always be disabled. Flash is a, it's a security nightmare, it's a, it's a hazard, and it's old technology, and it can't even do, you know, it can't even do um, stuff that other stuff can, can't, can do better. Sorry, I phrased that sentence really badly, but yeah. Flash dead in the water. So I, I, I'm not going to allow the idea that, that, that Pepper Flash being included in Google Chrome is going to be the maker or the breaker because um, if I'm running it on Linux, I'm happy to, to, to run the old Adobe um, barely maintained version of Flash that Adobe stopped working on two years ago uh, until the rest of the world decides that it's going to drop that old technology like uh, like the the bag of hammers that it is well actually that's a bit of a that's 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 a bit harsh actually a bag of hammers is actually sometimes useful um, whereas whereas Adobe is just it's slowing the internet down it's slowing the rate of the internet down um, I've actually got a tab from a from a previous video um, the, the, I don't know if it's going to have been. It's probably actually this, this isn't the, the video that this references isn't going to be out for a while. But um, yeah, Tim Berners Lee, when he um, sort of first successfully implemented the hypertext transfer protocol between uh, client and server, effectively inventing the World Wide Web, uh, he believed that there was an integral importance in the idea that the internet was an open. Um, platform in the same way that of course Linus Torvalds who invented Linux uh, believes that that any kind of technology is strongest when it's uh, a platform that people can collaborate on a, a, an open one um, and this is why something like Adobe Flash is just dead in the water is because um, 
because it's not an open platform it's a proprietary one and that's why there will be a day when facebook dies that's a day that that's because you know there'll be a day when twitter dies or or, or will will go open source there's you know there's a reason why uh, you know, WhatsApp will die, um, but there are, uh, but the but the, uh, the open source variants, they might not be as prominent, they might not be as well marketed because they might not have the money, but they're there and they have survived. IRC, which is an open protocol, has been around since 1988. 1988. No, 1988, that's a long time and it's still readily used. In fact, there is a Nerdfighter IRC, which is absolutely frigging fantastic. It's also, um, you know, a lot of people use it for, for providing uh, community tech support and, um, and things like that. It's a fantastic platform and it's fantastic because it's open, which means that anyone can contribute to it and improve it. Um, so thanks, thanks a lot, Adobe. You've just basically held uh, internet technology back Probably at least five years, but uh, but who's counting, right? Okay, so anyway, I've talked about stability. I have talked about mobile platform. I've talked about the support for Flash, which I guess is still kind of relevant. Um, the big thing that I really want to talk about as well, which definitely, because it kind of sounds like I'm, I am opting on the side of, of Google Chrome here, especially considering that I've got it up here on the screen. This is a Google Chrome browser that I'm that I'm using. But there is a problem with Google Chrome, and it's a growing problem. It's it's and it's a problem with Google actually as a company. Um, Google Chrome curates pretty much all of their extensions, but they don't curate them for quality, and they don't curate them for for things like stability or quality control or anything like that. Or at least <laughs> not that I'm aware of. I think they, they they may do it by that, but but if they do curate according to quality control, the bar is is quite low. Um. No, they curate according to whether or not a uh, an extension which can be uh, distributed on the Chrome store just fits within their world vision, their 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 politics, their you know terms and conditions, if you will. Um, by what I mean is that is that they actually forbid the use of a lot of extensions simply because they allow you to do things that Google doesn't approve of. Um, the chief one being uh, downloading YouTube videos now. It, it basically, effectively, Google tries to stamp on any extension that, allow, that that claims to allow you to download YouTube videos. There might be one or two that are sort of that have squeaked through, but if Google sort of found out about them, they would take them off the store. Um, and I've noticed this increasingly um, becoming increasingly common now that Google they legislate against their competition. This is a very dangerous thing. The Android, for example, which is is quite well known for using the Google Play Store uh, as its main software repository doesn't allow either uh, fdroid.org or the Amazon App Store to be installed through the Google Play Store because Google consider the Amazon App Store and fdroid to be competition. And of course, uh, they, they could very well do. I mean, the fdroid provide um, hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of software, not only financially free, but also ad-free as well. Um, it you know, like if, if people were to seriously find out what open source can offer in its true capacity, um, the proprietary world would be would be running scared. Um, you know, it, it, the the only the power that companies like Facebook have over us is it, it, it's it's not power through strength. It's p power through relying on the majority of people are ignorant enough to know that there isn't a better option out there. And so many times have we seen companies take advantage of consumer ignorance. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm not saying that the consumers are, are, are choosing to be ignorant or, or you know, it's, 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 you know it's, it's not like open source projects have huge swathes of cash that they can overpower the marketing techniques of uh, their corporate rivals. But, um, but yeah, the, you know, the, the big companies, your Googles, well, I, I, Google's a bit of a complicated one, but, but um, you know, with, with a lot of uh, companies, uh, they kind of rely on people being in the dark about how software works and what software can do and the legality behind it, that they often take advantage of it. Google does take advantage of it as well, but because Google do contribute a lot to the open source world, they kind of do so... Uh, but also recognizing the power that op open source can bring, uh, particularly when it comes to things like Chromium as its browser, and they, of course, do the Google Summer of Code, and they have coding platforms and so forth, because Google effectively try and keep as, uh, you know, their, their search engine and all, all, you know, a lot of their stuff as proprietary as possible. Um, they also have to understand that um, 
they would rather be on the side of open source rather than competing for it. Um, it's, you know, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer, uh, you know. Of course, it's, it's, it was very famously mentioned by one of the spokespeople at Microsoft that open source, of course, is a cancer. Um, a cancer to what? I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember now. Uh, probably to, to, to a lot of the um, exploitative profits that are often made by companies like Microsoft. Microsoft are the worst for it. Have you seen some of the press releases that come out about Windows 9? God, I'm going to do a video about that. Anyway, this video is certainly taking its time now. Open source is definitely a big thing for me when it comes to browsers. So if you are running a Linux operating system, I would re personally recommend that you use Chromium rather than Chrome, unless you are perhaps setting a, up a computer for, an, uh, for, for someone who isn't very tech savvy. On my uh, mother's computer, I have set up a Lubuntu installation, which she's very, very happy with because it harkens back to the old desktop environments where you just click the start button, you click on the menu, the, the category of, of what program you want, and then the program it's about as straightforward Lubuntu is once it's set up properly it's the most user friendly interface going and I've just installed Google Chrome on top of that so she doesn't have to worry about Flash or updating Flash or any of this kind of nonsense nonsense so um, but if you are somewhat reasonably tech savvy tech savvy enough to have made it this far into the video I would personally recommend if you are running a Linux distribution to run Chromium rather than Chrome that being said because because the um, it uses the same bookmarking system the to, to synchronize bookmarks across the board but ultimately, if you're running only a Linux operating system, I would probably recommend Firefox. I'm going to leave it up to you as to whether or not you believe that Firefox is stable enough. Um, but Firefox doesn't have the same problem that Google Chrome, uh, Google Chrome has, uh, is that it doesn't curate the add-ons. Uh, it, 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 it has a completely free and open platform when it comes to developing add-ons for, for Firefox browser, which means that you can do more through the add-ons. It means you can download YouTube videos and you can... Um, uh, you know, do things that out, uh, that are outside of Google's uh, terms and conditions. So, um, so yeah, if you're running a Linux distribution, um, you're probably tech savvy enough to actually have multiple browsers on the go. But for your for your main one, I would I would probably opt for Firefox on the basis that it works well on Android, it works well on Linux, and it's open source and um, generally an all round good browser. If that sandboxing is a big issue for you, and it is a big issue for me, Chromium might be the way to go. I would consider Google Chrome to be a last resort, but um, it, you know it does have some really good things going for it. Even though, and, and and Google Chrome is like the majority of it is still Chromium. The majority of it still is open source. So in regards to that, that's fine. So anyway. That's about it from me today. Um, what I was actually quite surprised in the last video was the number of people that actually opted uh, said that they used Firefox. And, and I was actually discussing uh, this with some of the more techie nerd fighters on the IRC, believe it or not. And um, they almost exclusively use Firefox. Firefox definitely has some overwhelming advantages to uh, Google Chrome and Chromium. Um, I think the sandbox thing is a particularly important thing to me being a YouTuber because then it means that... Um, uh, my uploads are just that little bit safer because the tab that they're being uploaded into is sandboxed. Um, so again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching this video if you have made it this far. The browser that I actually did test outside of these two was one called Midori. It's open source and it uses the WebKit engine. Um, and and I, I haven't found it stable enough to... Um, to really um, to take seriously. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe one day, but I, I have tested Midori a good number of times now, and under stress it does seem to, to crumble, whereas maybe Firefox or uh, Chrome don't. Okay, so um, thank you very much for watching. That's about it for me today, and if you've made it this far through the video, tell me your favorite open source project. Or if you don't know what an open source project is, or if you don't know um, whether or not something's open source or not, talk to me about a browser that isn't Firefox or Chrome. Something else that you might have tried, maybe share your experiences with it, um, just so that I know you've made it all the way to the end of the video. I really do kind of appreciate the commenters and subscribers that actually do take the time to to listen to me go on like a, uh, like a crazy person. But... Um, just uh yeah so anyway that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching until next time i have been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now